Howdy there! I'm A.V. Smith, and in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to use a reference board and a simple 3D block out in Blender to create a piece of 2D concept art like this one. So let's get started. So this is a mood board that I've set up in a program called PureRef. It's 100% free, really easy to use for compiling your images for mood boards, for illustrations, concept art, 3D, whatever you like. So you can see here that even though this is obviously going to be a stylized environment, most of my references are actually pretty realistic. And this is generally how you want to set things up. So. Get images of the kinds of things you think you'll have in your scene, inspiration, general ideas, but you want to have a good level of realism in what you're working with, even if you're dealing with a really stylized environment. Even in saying that, you can notice that over here I actually have some images both from the Bramley Hedge series and some concept art and screenshots from Minish Cap, which kind of inform the stylized ideas that I'm going for here. Um, since I'm creating an image that's kind of a soup bowl that's been turned into a house by a very small person, I thought these would be quite relevant to what I'm doing. And in seeing that, let's get into Blender. And here we are, movie magic here in Blender. So this is your default workspace you get when you open up Blender. If you're new or you're used to using Maya, pop right up here to edit, preferences, keybinds down here, and change this to industry compatible. So what this is going to do is it's going to change your keybinds to the Maya keybinds. So everything is going to be tied to the Alt key. You can see Alt left, Alt middle, and Alt right. This is just gonna make it easier for you. You won't have to move your hand over the keyboard to try and fix up your model. So let's pop this into edit mode and we're gonna click up here and change it to face mode. So this is just going to let us drag these edges out. We're going to make a floor plane right now. Keep going till you have a nice big square or whatever shape you're going for. So now let's pop ourselves back into object mode because we are going to add in a big sphere that's going to form the basis of the bowl I'm going to make. So let's get our sphere in. What you might notice when you zoom in on this sphere is that it's actually quite faceted because of how it's constructed out of polygons. So what we want to do is we want to go up into the object menu and we want to smooth shade it. So now when you zoom in on it, it's nice and smooth and it'll take the lighting really well when we light this scene. So let's scale up this bad boy. You can see that it's clipping through the floor, but from the camera angle that we're going to use, it doesn't matter, you're not going to be able to see it. It just saves time sculpting a whole little thing out. But what we want to do now is we want to add some more pieces of geometry, which we'll be using to create the bottom of the bowl where it kind of would naturally contact a table or something like that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pop ourselves back into edit mode. We're going to use the bevel function. So we're going to change it to edge mode. Select this edge. Obviously we're on bevel. And we want to give it a little bit of a lip here. And another little bit of a lip. So the reason for this is so that when I go back into face mode and I select this one, I can create that kind of little hole you can call it or that particular shape so what we're going to do now is we're going to start adding in other pieces of geometry so this is a block out you really really don't want to be going to super amounts of detail otherwise you're just kind of you may as well just sculpt something in 3d you don't need to make it in 2d if you're going to go into that level of detail what i'm doing here is i'm just Adding in some nice pieces of geometry representing windows, doors, things like that. You saw with the door I used the bevel function again, which is super duper handy if you're trying to get a cylinder to have sort of an indent for something like a coke can, you could definitely do that. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to capture kind of the essence of what I want the scene to be. So I want this to be a really domestic space. You can see those little 
structures there are what I'm going to be using to make a little clothesline, and I'm going to be adding in these sort of little logs for, that somebody could presumably sit at. Um, you don't have to stick 100% to the geometry that you've kind of set out. You really can change things up, even in the 2D stage, but it's just easy to get, you know, the general vibe that you're trying to work with here all set before you go into there, because we're going to light this scene. So let's pop ourselves into lit mode. So this is using lights here. You want to scroll yourself down through all your geometry and you want to go into the light. So you can move it up here and you'll notice that we now have a nice light in our scene, but it's looking pretty dark at the moment. So we'll add in another light just over here. Still looking pretty dark, but what we're going to do now is pop ourselves down into the light menu and we're going to increase the power of this light. So you don't want to do this on both lights, you don't want it to be super washed out. So we'll decrease it on this one so we want only a little bit of backlighting and a nice front facing light. You don't want to colour these, you don't want to do too much with them, just leave them alone. And we'll pop a smooth shade on the top of our ball and in a few other places, just to make everything look nice with the lighting and not too faceted. And here we are with our little finished scene. It's pretty simple and you can go through and you can actually render this, but for my purposes, I don't think I really need it. I'm just going to go into the snipping tool or you can use print screen do a nice big snip of your scene. And this is what we are going to work from in our 2D illustration. So let's get started on that. So here we are in Procreate and you can see kind of what I'm doing is I'm just highlighting the basic forms here. But what you'll also notice is that I'm changing some of them into different objects that kind of have a similar lighting which just saves time having to, you know, sculpt all those little things. So I've isolated this from kind of, you know, the ugly grid in the background. So what we're going to do is in just a moment, we're going to take all of the lighting and, that we just spent time on and we are going to start our value painting. So you want to do this in black and white. Do not add color yet. Just keep it nice and in black and white. Once we've got our value painting in, what we're going to do is we're going to add a color adjustment layer to get on kind of the general colors that we're going to use. This won't be final, it'll look pretty flat initially, but we're going to go in with different kinds of adjustments to make it look a little bit better. What you can see I'm doing here is I just used a color balance to bring out the blues and the yellows mostly in this scene because I think those are the most prominent colors since a lot of it's green. The general idea of this is just that you're working with the values that you got from the 3D scene. So I guess you can call this cheating if you like, but it makes things really easy if you're doing kind of environment art. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. While I created this in Procreate, you can do this in pretty much any software. If you're looking for something free like Blender, you can use Gimp or Critter. They both work really well for something like this. So you still kind of have to have an idea of, you know, values and things like that. You don't want to just go with the defaults in Blender. You can see that I kind of enhanced the lights and made the darks deeper to kind of make it a more interesting piece. Because if I just stuck with, you know, the default, it wouldn't be as good as it could be, you know? So we're right at the end here. So let's have a peek at the finished result. So that's the end of this little tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it even though I couldn't get super in-depth into any of the concepts, but maybe I'll expand on it in a future video. Thanks so much for watching and maybe I'll see you next time!